I want to find something that is real, but if you take it out of context, or if you freeze it, if you press pause on that moment, it's fantastical. My name is George Voronov. Uh, I am a documentary photographer based in Dublin, um, and I am the co-founder of Junior Magazine. I got into photography in a really roundabout kind of way. I ended up doing a project for school when I was about 15. The, the prize for the competition was basically that one member of the team who made the video got to go on a trip to the Arctic Circle. For some reason, I ended up being the person that went. Up until I left, I'd actually never used a camera before. There was, there was a photographer there called, his name was Robert Van Warden, who's a really good photographer, and he taught us all kind of the basics of, you know, how to use a camera and how to document this kind of amazing opportunity. He initially offered to have a look at whatever images I would shoot, much to his chagrin. I ended up filling up like an SD card every two days. So he was just looking at like thousands and thousands of images every day because I was just taking photos of everything. I mean, it was like landscapes, but then like I was shooting like the food I was eating. I was shooting like cutlery and like the clothes I was wearing, just everything was documented. And it, it was, yeah, so, so coming back from that trip, I realized that photography was probably the first thing that I really wanted to dive deep into. Like the, the first project that, that I shot kind of um, going into knowing that it was going to be a series and uh, that it was going to be a body of work was um, a kind of mini documentary of a month long motorcycle trip that myself and my friends did through Vietnam. Th that, that was the first time when I felt like I was kind of um, going along the same trajectory as all of the photographers that I aspired to growing up. So all, all of the kind of like the Life magazine photographers and the National Geographic photographers, all of those like crazily mythologized um, artists. I mean, I, I guess it kind of goes back to how like all photographers are kind of really nerdy in a way. You, you know, the, the, the excitement that you get about putting all of your little toys in your little bag and, um, you know, trying to figure out what lenses to bring in your tripod and when we got out there, it just, it, like every single day uh, was injected with this crazy sense of purpose. Um, and I, it sounds really cliche, but I felt just so alive every single day. Vietnam made it easy. You had incredible people, you had wonderful landscapes, and you had my best friends in the world on motorbikes. It, it was fucking unbelievable. And I, I don't think I've ever felt as I mean, as free and like as creative and as energized about the whole idea of taking photographs as I did on that trip. All, all, all the, the, the photographs within them have, you know, ideally speaking, uh, as a certain kind of hyper real element. But then there might be one or two that are actually kind of, you know, off the wall, you know, ideally. And it's the, the intention is that a viewer would be going through them and they have enough kind of reference points starting out, they, okay, well, this is clearly real, you know, that's fine, that's fine, and then, oh, what's going on here? And that's the, that's the magic. The, the whole idea of finding surreal aspects in reality is just a kind of theme that can be applied to lots of different things. When I'm shooting like a personal, a personal documentary project, medium format film is the way to go. When you're shooting medium format, because A, it's so fucking expensive, and B, because you only have 10 shots before you have to reload your, your roll, that's when you really start thinking about the photos that you're making. You almost have a predefined idea of what you're going to be photographing. So the, the, the camera then really becomes a tool, kind of like an extension of yourself. And I mean, I think everyone will tell you this, you know, you, you have a digital camera, you shoot hundreds, thousands of frames, and you get a few keepers. Um, you shoot a roll of medium format and, you know, you get 10 photographs. And of those, you know, at least three or four, you're going to be hanging on to. Having started shooting film extensively, anytime I do pick up the digital camera, it's it's a lot less rapid fire. And it's more, okay, I've got this one. Move on to the next one. I actually totally do have a dream project. I think I've toyed with the idea for years now at this point, but it was only a few months ago that I kind of, um, I sat down and I really thought about it. And so I'm Russia myself. I used to spend a lot of time in Russia. I used to go back every summer. I haven't been back since I was 17 and I can't go back because of conscription. I, I want to A, have it be about a very personal story about me coming home. 
but then there's also been this huge sweeping political changes um social changes you know widespread homophobia like the country is totally going down the drain um it's poisoned by what is effectively an authoritarian regime and I really want to tackle that in my photo series, but tackle it from a kind of delicate perspective. Not even by my choice, but it just kind of happened that way that I'm in this unique position where I can be sympathetic to some aspects of the Russian national character and, you know, Russia as a state or as a political entity. I also have a certain kind of, you know, Western leaning as well that kind of gives me something to compare it to and to criticize it, but the criticism is ultimately coming from a place of love as opposed to from a place of judgment. If there was anything that I kept from those early days is the the kind of the core idea of documenting a specific thing. You never know when something might be significant, so you just you catalog and you document everything.